Hello, welcome back everyone. Thank you for joining me yet again last night. I left you with this little idea. Whiskey is two things. Distilled from grain, aged in oak. Now it's time to talk about the different types. So without further ado, we will get the booze baron out here doing his thing to talk to you all about bourbon. Hello, and welcome to the first ever proper Booze Baron lesson on mm. bourbon. Bourbon is defined by four major components. First, it is at least 51% corn whiskey. Second, it is made in the United States of America. Third, it is distilled at no greater than 80% ABV or 160 proof. And fourth, it is aged for at least two years in new charred oak barrels. Let's go over that again. No less than 51% corn alcohol. Made in the United States of America. Distilled at no higher than 80% alcohol by volume. Aged for two years in charred new oak barrels. Now, each of those four elements make bourbon a very specific drink. It doesn't taste like any other whiskey out there, um, though there is very little variance between styles of bourbon. The main variance being in either the age, the uh, somewhat the new maker's percentage of corn and what have you, and also what additives are added to it. Larger scale producers do tend to add quite a bit of uh, colouring and flavouring. Um, these are the people like the, the Jim Beans of the world. And as I've probably stated before, there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. It's just you're not really getting the taste of the spirit. So, for example, this particularly cheap normal bourbon, um, it's a Holes 3, by the way, which value for money wise in Australia is probably the best bang for buck you're going to get. It's uh, on par price-wise with some of the very large-scale producers and yet has a far greater flavour sort of range of complexity. Corn. Let's talk about the corn. The corn in this is what gives it that light, really, really fresh, fruity style aroma. I mean, you can almost smell corn syrup and sugar on this. So, naturally, you go ahead and add this to something which, at least in America, is made with high fructose corn syrup, Coca-Cola, and you get a really refreshing drink. And by refreshing, I really mean something that just pairs well and tastes like slightly alcoholic Coca-Cola. In Australia, most of the uh, colas and uh, soft drinks are made with uh, cane sugar rather than corn syrup. But still, you'll notice that the sweet notes in both tend to complement one another, and the other major flavour component coming from the wood ageing, right, which is the, the vanilla and these sort of savoury oaky notes, pair in very well with the uh, caramel and um, some of the sort of the, the darker charred molassesy style um, notes that you get in a cola style beverage. It is very light compared to a lot of whiskies. You'll notice that straight away. It's what a lot of whiskey drinkers seem to start out on. And it's, you know, easy enough to drink. There's, there's a lot of lightness, a lot of fruitiness. A beautiful floral aroma that is almost like fresh jasmine and vanilla. And... It's incredible how you just get the strongest smell of proper new charred oak. The oak is the second probably yeah, yeah, it's the second most important part of the bourbon flavour spectrum. The, the fact that a law was passed for the sake of post-prohibition, pulling out of the depression, we need to re-energize the industry, so has to be corn, high percentage. Um, we're going to make bourbon the official national whiskey, so it gets protected has to be put in new oak barrels. Now, the new oak barrels wasn't about controlling consumption. It was actually about encouraging consumption. So, essentially, before this, like, Scotch distilleries, 
distillers could use the barrels again and again and again until they'd got every bit of flavour that they could out of it. Now, after this law was brought in, um, essentially, you can only use it once. So you char the barrel, you get it, you fill it with your whiskey, you age it, done. And then you've got to chuck it out. It encouraged the development of the cooperage industry, it encouraged the development of the corn industry with making the high percentage of corn, and um, it also encouraged the forestry industry. So that there was, you know, the transport in between all the rest of them. It was a big economic kind of factor. But flavour-wise, it means you can't get any additional finishes on something which is technically called a bourbon. So the most flavour you can get is from its spirit, through to its aging in the wood. So it's the quality of the wood and the quality of the new make spirit. That is it for bourbon. You cannot affect it beyond that, which is kind of cool in its own way, but at the same time limits it. Also, another note, corn hanging out in barrels for a long time starts to decline in flavor profile. It loses a lot of its aromatic qualities and ends up um, becoming rather dull and lifeless. So the idea of premium bourbons those that have been aged for 10, 12, 18 years becomes quite mm, interesting. They tend to have to have lower levels of corn, so they hit right on that 51% corn level. Um, and honestly, they're, they're usually aged in small barrels, pushing in a whole lot of extra flavor. They're good, but compared to what you're paying price-wise for that, if you were to take a premium level single malt scotch whiskey, you'll get far more variety of flavor and far more complexity from a scotch. That's um, more to do with the scientific analysis of a flavor spectrum and not really necessarily my opinion. I find a lot of premium bourbons, bourbons are actually very nice to drink if you're sick of the uh, particularly kind of heavy notes of some scotches. So there you have it. That's kind of bourbon right there in a nutshell. Main flavor issues are quantity of corn in the alcohol and two, yeah, the barrel. There are many brilliant labels of bourbon out there. Unfortunately, I will not be reviewing and selling any on the website as you can't make a bourbon in Australia. It has to be made in the US and we are only going to be selling on the Australian spirits at the moment. But, tell you what, it's a great little drink. Try it neat, give it a real kind of chance to prove itself, I guess. Talk to you all soon. Hiya, so how do you enjoy that? Your first chance to actually see the Baron kind of doing his thing, my first chance to do cutscenes, and um, a whole lot of fun explaining a spirit that really a lot of bartenders tend to avoid these days. Well, at least us, you know, cool cocktail. Sorry, not bartenders, I'm a mixologist. But seriously, bourbon actually has been both overrated for a long time and then underrated more recently, and there are ways of drinking it to really enjoy it. So I'll be talking about that in the next little no bullshit video. Um, for now, just let me know what you think about understanding what the hell bourbon is. Cheers.